Are you feeling all right? Huh? Me? Yeah, why? Well, situations like this, you're usually tapping your foot or constantly checking your phone. You're unusually calm right now. I guess. I'm not really worried about this. These people want to give us money to do our show. And the one piece of the puzzle that can help seal the deal is missing. In fact, they're 30 minutes late. That doesn't stress you out? It'll all work out. How are you so calm? What do you know about- You know what? I don't like you keeping secrets. Oh, okay. A secret weekend D&D &D player? That's different. How is that different? I've already said too much. Hey guys, any word? Not yet. I'm sorry about this. It's okay, don't worry. Uh, we do have a three o'clock, so hopefully they'll get here soon. We were just talking to Mr. Taradash. Uh, he's the boss. And uh, wait, 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 wait. Your boss's name is Taradash? What are the odds of him having the same name as the company? One in a billion? I love it. <laughs> this guy, he's, he's, he's so dry. He is. Uh, remember when you interviewed that actress from L.A.? Um, Lena Juliet Weber. Right, right, right. And you said that thing. Oh, and they're here. Uh, sorry. Uh, in the lobby, rushing up. Problem with the subways. You know what it is. I do. So they're on their way up? Yeah. Excellent. So, I guess we wait. This person, Ronnie's replacement? Is it someone from the interviews you held last week? So, uh, tell us about your experiences with podcasting. Um, uh, my name is Guy Manning. I used to trade on Wall Street because a couple of minor infractions I was let go, and now I work a couple jobs to make ends meet. I listen to a lot of economic podcasts. I have a vast knowledge in sports and automobiles. Yeah, we don't really cover those areas on our show, but could be interesting to add something like that. It could. What were these minor infractions that caused you to be let go? Ah, uh, yeah. I Well, I, I, I used to, uh, well, I would take clients out to clubs, get them special treatment. I would buy alcohol, certain medications for them and myself. It was all on company money. You did this on company money? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, you'd be surprised what goes on. I once went on a two-day bender, these German dudes. I'm telling you, we totaled up something ridiculous, like 18 and a half hookers. I don't know how much coke we did. That's awesome. Thank you for coming. Daria, tell us a bit about yourself and your experience with podcasting. Well, when I was 17, I first discovered cutting, and, you know, that really made me feel alive. And after that, I got hooked on cough syrup with a wine cooler chaser, and that helped take away the empty feelings. Then after that, I moved to the city. And it was there that I discovered my true, real first love. Film. Oh, a film buff. There's this theater on 8th and 45th that used to show these old pornographic movies from the Czech Republic. That kind of film buff. It was there that I met Darius. Which is weird because my name's Daria, so it, we're kind of like soulmates in a name sense. He was the one that introduced me to the world of the East Village with its beautiful speakeasy doors. A world that only exists between 1124 and 533. A world unknown to the common public, where you can lose your public self only to find your true self amidst the gas masks and glow sticks and human cages. Also, I've been really enjoying listening to all of these podcasts about home repair recently. There's one from the UK that I really enjoy. And there's this one podcast that I've been listening to a lot recently that only talks about family circus cartoons. I just really love family circus. Vic Hogan. 
Do you have any experience with podcasts? Any at all? Yeah, actually, I, I do. I, I used to co-host this podcast with my improv troupe. And I do a lot of impressions, so they would always rely on me for the celebrity interviews, if you know what I mean. What, what impressions would you do? Oh, uh, so many. Um, I do Christopher Walken. I do uh, Woody Allen. I do a great George W. Bush. I do uh, Robert Loggia. Can, 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 can we hear Christopher Walken? Yeah, right now? Sure. Just, just give me a second here. Watch this. Hello, I'm Christopher Walken, and I want you to know how angry I am at you. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Here's another one. Check this out. Just swallowed some air. <laughs> I'm so neurotic. I love New York and jazz music. Sony! <laughs> Woody Allen. Check this one. Last one. Here's another one. Love it. Brings the house down. Hello. I'm your Lopez. I hope you like my show. Say welcome to my little friend, <laughs> Beverly Hills Chihuahua. <laughs> I could do more. I could do Scott Wolf, uh, Luke Skywalker, uh, Todd Bridges, um, Wolfman Jack, yeah. Colin Firth. Yeah, um, Sissy Spacek. That's good. Here we go. <laughs> Um, Thomas Jefferson, New York City College of Technology, have a degree in engineering, and I see you've interned with three radio stations. What kind of microphone are you guys using? It's a Samson CO3. I thought it was the three. You tell with the amount of background hiss. The what? You're obviously not mixing it down through professional software. What are you guys using for mix down and import? Garage band. Garage band, <laughs> of course. So you guys want to maintain some, like, low-level street cred thing? Yeah, that's cool. I get it. I don't know if I'm interested. In what? In joining your team. Who said because that Because if you I could... come on board, I come on board as a professional. I come on board to win. You can monkey around with all your little basic preset software stuff. If you want to win, and win big, and go to the show, then you go with my plan of attack. Not some half-assed Uh, little... you know that we're looking for a co-host for the show, right? No, you're not. You're looking for someone who knows what they're doing. I'm sorry, what? Heavy metal music. We talk about heavy metal, old and new. We cover local heavy metal, classic heavy metal. Saints of Pain, Tenth of Fate, Lapdog of Satan. Judas Priest, Sabbath, the late great Ronnie James Dio. Trickster, Striper, Dokken, Vixen. You just... Hey, you look kind of familiar. Do we know you from somewhere? You know, I was thinking the same thing. Thank you for coming. After I left North Carolina, I came to New York to try my hand in journalism. Turns out, it was a lot easier to find a temp job in an office than it was to become a writer. So I started blogging. It started off more as a hobby for me, but has become more full-time, which is pretty exciting. What do you blog about? New York. I mean, the city is amazing. And the people that live in the places like the one I'm from only know it for movies. So I try to give them a different perspective on it. Wait, is your blog Down Home New York City? Yes. I've read it. It's pretty good. Thank you. Do you have any experience podcasting? Listening or doing? Either. <laughs> I've listened to maybe three. Would our show be one of those? Yes. It's totally okay if you haven't heard it. Oof, okay. I haven't, I'm sorry, but I plan on doing it as soon as I'm done here. Okay. Do you I... have an extensive knowledge of music, TV, and movies? I know a few things. What are your thoughts on the Lost finale? Oh, um, you know, I didn't watch that show. I kind of got caught up in Desperate Housewives for a while. <laughs> but I don't watch that show anymore. 
Yeah, that's okay. I Who do you think are the bands out there right now that are ready to break out of indie obscurity and into mainstream stardom? Um, Coldplay? Oh, dear God. I can learn about indie music. No, that's fine. I don't think... Do don't you have think... any thoughts on the state of superhero movies and the fact that they are representing characters that were developed for a very specific group but are now being produced for a mass audience? Well, obviously, the bar was set pretty high in 78 with Richard Donner's Superman. I mean, for a while, no one has been able to recreate that sense of verisimilitude that he brought to that genre. I mean, in fact, I don't think it was until Blade, or, or more importantly, Brian Singer's X-Men, that the genre was given a much-needed jolt. I mean, Singer took on Donner's template and applied it to the X-Men, and did his best to ensure that that world was based in reality. I mean... Starting a superhero movie and during the Holocaust, an addition I believe screenwriter Chris McQuarrie added, was a huge leap in the right direction. What are your thoughts on the Raimi Spider-Man films? Mm, there's only one that stands the test of time, and that's the second one. Really? Yes. The first one. While enjoyable, it's dated and doesn't fully embrace the witty aspects that Peter Parker's character takes on once under the mask. I mean, sure. There's the odd line here and there, but I don't think they got it right. I mean, the thing about part two is that the character development is the perfect link to care. We want to know what's going to happen to these characters. We want to know that they're going to be okay. As far as number three is concerned, well, I like to forget that it was ever committed to film. Should we discuss Nolan's Batman films? We could, but I have to confess, I'm the minority on this one. In what way? Well, I have issues with the character to begin with, mainly his costuming choices. Such as? His cape. Marry me. What just happened? Alina, thank you so much. I have a feeling we're going to be contacting you very shortly. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Seriously, what just happened? Hello? Okay, I'll be over in a bit. How's the lay of the land? Yeah. Okay. I'll see you then. Bye. I'm a little nervous. You'll be fine. He has not spoken to me at all since I told him I was leaving. I already gave him some lip about that. I hope that means that you yelled at him and not that you guys were kissing. I take it by your non-response that I should head downstairs. You should. Hmm. Why are you still wearing that stupid hat? I'm on my way to the airport, so I wanted to say goodbye. And I wanted to wish you luck for today. You're gonna knock them dead. And when I come back, they'll have signed you and given you billions of dollars. So, you'd better get more comfortable chairs for the show. So, uh, goodbye. Okay, I figured you were going to be mad at me still, although I'm, I'm not completely sure why. You probably think I'm walking out on the show and not coming back.
When's your flight leave? 4.45. You should probably get going. You don't want to get stuck in traffic. Good tip. Thanks. It's just awful, in an awful place. I wanted to lie down and let the world swallow me up. But you saw something in me, and you grabbed a hold of it and pulled it out of that place. And if it hadn't been for you, I'd... Well, I wouldn't be here in this room, on my way to Europe. I will never be able to repay what you've given me. And I'm sorry for that. But I need you to know something, Cal. That I am grateful. And I am coming back. You are my best friend. And I love you. How'd it go? How long is he gonna be pissed at me? Why is he pissed at me? The three of us are like wanderers in some post-apocalyptic world and we are just trying to... I really need to stop watching The Road Warrior before going to bed. Let me start again. The three of us are looking for something. Something that's going to complete us. And I know that sounds like a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason, because it's true. He finds a sense of purpose in you, and you give him the confidence to push ahead. And what could I possibly give you? You give me something very rare. Someone to give a damn about. Look, I hate the fact that you're leaving. I, I really do. But I also know that you have things to do in this world. So go find those things and do them. You have to look after him. Cal has things. I will make sure that he stays clean and sober. You know, I'm more than just a serial gobbling wisdom spouting sage. I'm quite aware of things. Okay. Yeah, I'm telling you, if I come back and he's a mess, I'm gonna kick you in the throat. Well, now I have incentive to make sure he's not a mess. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> You know, when I first met you, you were this unsure, mischievous girl. And now I see this amazing woman in front of me. Go find your best damn bowl of cereal, Ronnie. I will. So you're off. 
I am. I can't tell you how awesome I think it is that you're going on this trip. Yeah, pretty scary, huh? No. You'll be great. You gonna do the show? Cal asked me. I said no. It, it didn't feel right. But... But you're thinking about it. I am. You know what? I say you do it. Yeah? Yeah. I think you're special, Emily. Like I have to wear a helmet special? No. I think you're special to Cal. Well, I think it's a little early in the whole scheme of things. I've, I've heard him talk about girlfriends before, but there's a different sound in his voice when he talks about you. Thank you. You should do the show. I will seriously think about it. Please. I'd like for it to be in good hands for when I come back. <laughs> Listen, you have a great time over there. And be sure to send back lots of pictures and stuff, okay? I will. Definitely. Total Tara King moment. What'd you say? I said, uh... Tara King moment. It's this TV show I used to watch. The Avengers. There was this character named Emma Peel and another one called Tara King, and they had this exchange because Emma Peel was leaving, and then they had this conversation on the stairs. This is, this sounds weird. I'm sorry, this sounds so weird. But then it's not like that at all because you didn't give me any advice on how to stir John Steed's tea, and that was anti clockwise. He likes his tea stirred. Anti-clockwise. See you when I get back. So how's your day going? You know, the way you're staring at that computer screen makes me think you're trying to find a way around the content blocker. After you manned up and broke up with Lorna, you came over to my place. Drunk. I went to bed and you used my computer. Now, I'm going to chalk it up to inebriation as to why you didn't erase the history and stuff. And before we switched over to using my computer for recordings, I noticed new software on yours. Dude, we all have our things. And, judging by Ronnie's insistence that I look after you, and the fact that you've been so focused lately, I take it that you're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. I had a moment where I thought I was going to slip, but I couldn't do it. Why is that? Emily. Hmm. Speaking of, well, two things. One, She's upstairs right now, ironing your shirt. She said she wanted you to look good for the meeting today, so that's kind of cool. Secondly, we need to make a decision. Yeah. Alina is waiting for our call. She's been very patient, and she's ready to come to Taradash with us today. On the other hand, I spoke with Emily upstairs, and she said if we want, she would be willing to do the show. Oh. Wow. W what do you think we should do? No, 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 no. Your call. Okay. Okay. I've been 
horrible to Ronnie. This is what I hear on the streets. She said she's coming back. Do you think she is? Don't know. I should call her. Apologize. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. You're a writer. So what you're going to do is write her the greatest email in the history of emails. When the earth is laid to waste and the remnants of civilization are dug in the archives, then the worthy shall... Whoa, 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 whoa. Road warrior before bed again? Every night this week. Stop it! All right. Will do. And now you get to writing. And get ready. Because we have a date with a management company. so important that I had to stop watching my Charles in Charge marathon and I come over. There's a Charles in Charge marathon on TV. Self-produced marathon. I bought the DVDs. Odd purchase. Well, I'm glad you were able to find the... And thank you for... Why are you wearing that? Wearing what? On your face. I don't feel anything. Funny. I didn't take you for the provoking response type. Something new I'm trying out. How's it working out for you? Twelve stairs, four comets, and one marriage proposal. Ooh, I think you could beat that record. Once I have enough to buy a goatee, all bets are off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. He doesn't want it to go down that way. So now we have to change our entire strategy. I mean... This guy's becoming more trouble than he's worth, and at this point, I'm gonna be honest with you, if he were to have some sort of an accident, like a falling down an elevator shaft cutting or getting attacked by a wild pack of rabid hobos. Then I most likely wouldn't shed a tear. Oh, oh, come on, Gareth. I'm only kidding. I mean, I would totally shed a tear if he died. Well, like, one tear. Well, she ain't a redhead, so I know you're not dating her. That's my sister. This is her apartment. Well, for another month and a half, and then I get it. Sweet. Yep. Okay, follow me. Where are we going? Downstairs. My friend Owen's waiting down there. Downstairs? Yeah, I have a home office, uh, so I'm gonna hold the meeting. You understand my reluctance to follow you, a guy I've known for a short time, to a basement where you say your friend is waiting. You understand my reluctance, don't you? Well, yeah, but it's not like... We're not going to turn you into clothing or anything. No, it's just a meeting. Talk to you about things. All right, but... I'm a black belt, so don't try anything. I won't. I could scissor kick you into a stupor. I will definitely go out of my way to avoid that experience. Could probably hyperextend your arm. Got it. Could probably rip your throat out. Oh my god. Just go downstairs. Please. She's not a redhead, so obviously you're not dating her. I mean, should I be concerned with what you and Owen are going to do with her downstairs? I mean, you're not going to make a lady suit out of her, are you? Should I call the FBI or something? Owen! When are you coming back, Booberry? Well, it looks like you're the only one who didn't get the mandatory facial hair email. 
This is Ronnie. Hello, Ronnie. You must be Owen. I am. So if this is about what I think it is, can we speed things along? What, do you got a hot date? Yeah, General Mills, two for six dollars at the Key Foods by the subway. He loves cereal. That's cool. I'm into provoking response. How is Project Mustache going? Twelve stairs, four comments, and one marriage proposal. You should get a goatee. See what I tell you! Um, ow! Can we stop talking about facial hair talk here for a second so we can actually talk about something? Is there something you want to talk about? Okay. I've called you guys here today because... There's been a murder! Sorry, too much? Slightly. I liked it. Kudos. Thank you. Okay. Owen has introduced me to something recently that... Well, it's pretty amazing. What do you know about podcasts? Never heard of it. Okay. Let me tell you what we're going to do. Ronnie, my friend. There are people that you meet in this life that help you, that challenge you that make you a better person, that define you. And you, Ms. Tanaka, are one of those people. You've helped me believe in myself when I thought it wasn't possible. You pushed me to succeed and understand why I often complicate my life unnecessarily. You've done all of this because you're my friend. And that is a rare and beautiful thing. That day on the roof, I told you that I felt you were meant to be in my life. I still believe that, with all of my heart. And nothing I ever write or say to you can even begin to convey my gratitude. But let me say this. I will be here for you when you get back. I will devote as much time as time demands to hear everything you have to say about your amazing adventures. I cannot wait for that day. Until then, keep your wits about you, be safe, and keep your head up. And if you find yourself in a moment of despair or gloom, just think about the time we found Owen asleep and covered his face in Cheerios. Don't settle for anything less than greatness, Ronnie. You truly, truly deserve it. All the way. Love. Your friend, Cal. Wait.
seated in a mire of sadness and overwhelming darkness. How are you?